Thank you. So can you see my cursor? Yes, we can. Okay, so thank you for inviting me here and thank you all for joining this virtual talk. So today we're going to see how we can use historical data to teach an autonomous vehicle how to race. And autonomous racing is a very exciting application, first of all, because safety is very crucial and furthermore, because in order to maximize the performance, we really want to drive the vehicle at the limit of handling. For instance, in this video, we see a professional driver that in order to minimize the lap time is operating the vehicle on the edge. And autonomous racing has been very well studied in the past 10 years. And we, as we have seen also today, there are several strategies that can be used to synthesize controller for autonomous racing. And standard methodologies first leverage uh, the shape of the track to compute a racing line using optimization or dynamic programming strategies and historical data to identify the system parameters that describe the evolution of the model. And then the identified model and the racing line are used together from, with tools from control, control theory to design a tracking control. And this entire pipeline can be used to synthesize a control policy that maps stakes to control actions. And here the key message is that there are several strategies to design controllers that borrow tools from a wide variety of, uh, of, of fields. So when we started to work on this topic, we asked ourselves, can we simplify the control design? And so we started working on this problem when reinforcement learning gained popularity, as the promise of reinforcement learning is that we can leverage historical data, a lot of compute power to synthesize a control policy, which can be deployed on the real environment to collect new data and iteratively update our controller until we converge to a steady state behavior. And at the end of the learning process, we have a controller that is able to minimize the lap time. And there are several research labs and actually also companies that have the mission of designing a learning-based controller that can be automatically deployed on very challenging tasks. For instance, in this video on the top right, we see an algorithm from DeepMind that is learning how to run in this simulated environment. And we've seen tremendous success in, uh, in recent years. However, there is a major drawback. So here in this figure on the bottom right, I, is a figure that I borrowed from this paper where the author benchmarked six different model-based and model-free reinforcement learning strategies. And as we can see from this, from this figure on the top left, it took about 5,000 data points to simply learn how to balance an inverted tangent. And so for this reason, applying state-of-the-art methodologies to our autonomous racing task is challenging, especially if we want to use only experimental data. And so the topic of today's talk is going to be to design a data-efficient model-based reinforcement learning algorithm for autonomous racing. And the key emphasis is going to be on design an algorithm that can run based only on experimental data. But before diving into the details, I would like to show you one possible strategy that can be used to compute control actions. So let's say that we are given the state of our vehicle and we would like to compute the steering and acceleration command. We might want to forecast the trajectory of our vehicle over a short horizon. And in order to guarantee safety, we want to make sure that the predicted trajectory lands in a safe region. For instance, in this example, a safe region where the turning is available. And the reason why we want to have this safe region is because when planning over a short horizon, we want to account for the shape of the track beyond our prediction horizon. And for the same reason, when planning our trajectory, we would like to decide our strategy based on the future uh, of the track shape. And for this reason, we often design a terminal cost that tells us what's the predicted cost beyond our prediction horizon. And so with this strategy, we can use a prediction model, a safe set, and a value function to compute our control action. And these three key components are used both in the learning and the control communities. For instance, in model-based reinforcement learning, we usually estimate a prediction model, and then we use an optimization framework to plan a trajectory over an horizon of n step. Then we apply the first element of our optimizer vector, and we iterate this strategy. On the other end, in model-free reinforcement learning, we usually estimate from data a value function that maps the current state and the current action to the closed-loop cost of completing the task. And of course, these two strategies 
can we use, can we merge together? And so the last uh, key element that we're going to see today is a safe set that usually is computed in the safety critical control community. And a safe set S is a set that is forward invariant, meaning that if our system belongs to the set, we know that our uh, trajectory will evolve in this uh, particular set for all time instances. And for this reason, if we can compute a safe set that doesn't intersect with the unsafe region of the state space, we can guarantee safety. And uh, the message, and hopefully what I'm going to convince you with today's talk, is that in order to have data efficient learning that we can develop and deploy in the real world, we really need to operate at the intersection of these three circles. And uh, we're going to focus on our autonomous racing problem, where the goal is to minimize the lap time while satisfying state and input constraints. And we're going to make one key assumption. In particular, we will assume that the first feasible trajectory that is able to execute the task is given. And this trajectory might be given from a human demonstrator, or we can use a very simple path following controller that tracks the center line of the road at a low speed. And given this historical data, we are going to initialize our recursion to synthesize control policies. And at each time t, our controller will plan a trajectory using the prediction model, the safe set, and the value function. And so this finite time optimal control problem is uh, deciding, is computing control action as we discussed in the previous slide. We first plan a trajectory that lands in a safe region and we use the value function to forecast the cost beyond our prediction horizon. So now let's see how we can use historical data to estimate the safe set. In particular, how we can estimate the safe set around a point X. So in this figure, we assume that we are given some successful trajectories that are able to complete the task. And our goal is to estimate the safe set in a neighborhood of this state here depicted in orange. And so in order to estimate the safe set, we are going to compute, we are going to compute the k-nearest neighbor to this particular point, and then we are going to define the local convex safe set as the convex solve of the k-nearest neighbor. And here the idea is that if we are in a state that we have visited before and our trajectory is successful, probably that's a safe region of the state space because we have visited that part and we were able to perform a successful trajectory. And again, the safe region is computed around the state X which is a function of the previous optimal trajectory. So now let's see how we can estimate the value function, which is defined over this terminal constraint set. Again, we are going to use our historical data. And in particular here, our goal is to compute a value of the cost for each data point in this set of k-nearest neighbor. So what we are going to do is that offline, we will first compute the cost to go, which basically is the cost associated with the realized trajectory. For instance, the cost to go associated with this point is the time that it took uh, our controller to drive the vehicle to the finish line along that particular trajectory. And now that we have this cost to go, we can simply define a local value function approximation, which is simply given by the interpolation of the cost to go, which again, the cost to go is computed offline. And here you can use your favorite function approximators. We have decided to use linear programming to perform this approximation. So the last component that we need to design in order to uh, implement our controller is a prediction model. And in order to estimate a prediction model, we use non-parametric estimation, but for time constraints, I'm gonna skip uh, the details, which I'll be happy to discuss offline and are also in the paper. So in this first part of the presentation, we have discussed that we can iteratively synthesize predictive control policies by estimating a prediction model, a safe set and a value function. So now let's see how this strategy works on our uh, experimental platform. I hope that you can also hear the audio here. So first we collect the data points using a path following controller that tracks the center line of the road. And then we use historical data to iteratively update our controller. And so as you can see from this video, after just 10 laps, our controller was able to uh, realize that it has to cut into the curves. And furthermore, you can hear that the tires are squealing, meaning that we are really saturating the lateral tire forces. And we tested 
exactly the same controller on the California Proving Ground. This is a test track that we share with Hyundai in Southern California. And so here we first collected data using a simple path following controller that tracks the center line of the road at a low speed of eight meters per second. And then we iteratively update our controller once again, using only experimental data. And so what this figure shows, it shows that the lap time is, um, sorry, this figure on the X axis, we have the number of laps and on the Y axis, we have the lap time. So we first perform three laps of path following and then we use historical data to iteratively update our control policy until we converge to a steady state behavior. And here I want to underline that at any time, the control policy is constructed using only 1000 data points. Basically, these are the data points associated with the two best labs. And more specifically, at each time t, the control action is computed using only 100 data points. So these are the k nearest neighbor that are used to construct our value function and our safe set. And uh, this is the closed loop trajectory at convergence. Um, so here, what you can notice from the views on the bottom is that uh, our controller realizes that in order to minimize the lap time, it has to operate the vehicle on the edge of the track. And also in this video, you can hear that at all curves, the tires are squealing. Here I removed the audio, but the video is also online. Uh, the tires are squealing, meaning that we are really saturating the lateral tire forces. And this figure shows the closed loop trajectories where we color coded the velocity. So here, when our controller starts, uh, our vehicle accelerates and then it starts to brake right before entering the curve and it starts to accelerate right when exiting. And again, here we didn't compute a racing line offline. Our controller iteratively and safely explored the state space and realized that it has to hit the inner apex when entering the curve and the outer apex when exiting the curve. And we saw a similar behavior on the chicane. So in the second part of this talk, we have seen that when we design a model-based reinforcement learning algorithm, where we estimate from data a prediction model and a value function and a safe set, we can obtain data efficient learning that can be deployed on a real, on a real vehicle. And again, in the training process, we only use experimental data. So what is next? I would like to show you some of the things that we have been thinking over the past year. In particular, one of the topics that we focused on is human-machine interaction. And this topic has really been motivating by this driveway highway example, where we have a human vehicle, sorry, when we have a vehicle that is driven by a human and an autonomous vehicle. And here we assume that we have a high level module that tells us what's the intention of the human driver and also gives us a set of trajectories that might be followed by the vehicle. Here, this set of trajectory are represented by these polytops which are often referred to as forward reachable sets. And given these sets, our controller can plan a safe trajectory, simply avoiding these sets. And in this case, we can see that the controller is able to plan a trajectory that performs an overtaking maneuver. And a similar scenario happens when our high-level planner tells us that the human vehicle wants to change lane. And also in this case, our controller may plan an open loop trajectory that avoids collision with all robust reachable sets and is able to perform the, um, is able to perform the overtaking maneuver. However, in several, uh, in several situations, our high level planner will not be sure about the intention of the human vehicle. And in this case, we are given a bimodal distribution where in each mode, we have uh, different sets of trajectories as shown here in the figure. We have some robust reachable sets associated with the lane changing maneuver and some robust reachable sets associated with the lane keeping maneuver. In this case, if we want to plan a trajectory using the same strategy that we have discussed in the previous slides, our controller is going to plan a conservative trajectory that does not intersect with all possible realization of the human driven vehicle trajectories. And for this reason, our controller will not be able to perform an overtaking maneuver. So with Evo, which is a PhD student at Charmans, we started working on this problem to reduce the conservatism. And what we showed is that in this case, we might want to plan an open, open loop trajectories over a tree that branches 
in the future. And the key idea that this tree of possible trajectories will allow us to take into account that in the future, we will observe uh, new observations about the intention of the human vehicle. And so this allows us to incorporate feedback in the prediction. For instance, in this example, the human driven vehicle for the first few time steps is planning a simple trajectory. However, this trajectory branches in the future as the controller is forecasting that at some time in the future, we will be able uh, to understand the, the intention of the human vehicle. So in this case, our uh, autonomous vehicle will commit to, an over, uh, to a lane change maneuver if our human driven vehicle will stay on its lane and vice versa, if the human driven vehicle will change lane, then our autonomous vehicle will stay in its own lane. And in, this, in both cases, we will be able to perform the overtaking maneuver. So here again, the key, the key idea was to have different branches associated with, with the latent intention of the human driver. And this work was heavily based on a paper from the 90s from the group of Professor Mainz, when the author showed that optimizing over a tree of trajectory is actually um, the same to optimizing over feedback policies. However, at this stage, we do not have interaction between the control vehicle and the human vehicle. So with Yu Xiao, which is a postdoctoral scholar here at Caltech, we kept working on this problem and we modeled the interaction between the two agents using Markov decision processes. In particular, we introduced a latent discrete variable that models the intention of the human vehicle. In this example, lane keeping or lane changing. And we assume that we are given only a partial observation about this, uh, this discrete variable. On the other end, we assume that the state of the control vehicle, the autonomous vehicle is observable and continuous. So this observation allowed us to formulate a mixed continuous mixed observable mark of decision process that actually can be reformulated as a deterministic and finite dimensional optimization problem building on these three ideas. And if you are interested, I would be happy to chat about it um, offline. So finally, I would like to um, show you uh, what's the difference between optimizing over one single trajectory and optimizing over our tree, which leads to a closed loop uh, optimization over closed loop policies. So what we see in this, vehicle, in this video on the top, we have two vehicles. The red one is our autonomous car, and the blue one is the human driven vehicle. And here we have different trajectories, which are given by how our eye level prediction model. And as you can see in this animation, our autonomous car is planning a trajectory that avoids collision with all possible branches uh, that are given by our um, high level predicted, uh, by high, our high level module. And for this reason, we are not able to perform an overtaking maneuver. On the other end, when we optimize over this tree of trajectories, our controller is able to negotiate and influence the human driven vehicle and successfully complete the overtaking maneuver. So with this, uh, I computed my presentation. I see that I went a little bit faster than what I expected. And I would like to thank you for your attention. I would be happy to take any questions.